Hello, I'm Carol Ann Wonderland and welcome to Veterans Helping Veterans TV. Before I begin, I'd like to send a special thanks to the uh, original host of the show, Cheryl Schaefer. She's a veteran, uh, sister veteran and uh, sister legionnaire, and she offered me the privilege to stand in on her behalf, and thank you, Cheryl. I am most uh, privileged to be here tonight. Tonight's show is about a fairly new uh, emerging nonprofit organization here in the Silicon Valley, and uh, the name of the organization begs the question, no event. So in just a moment, I will introduce you to our guest, but first, just a little bit about me. I am an Air Force veteran, a Cold War veteran, and I have served as a career Department of Defense employee. Currently, I am serving with the Air Force, uh, Air National Guard, here in Silicon Valley. I am a family programs manager, and I've been with them since two months after 9-11 in 2001. I've been active in the veteran service community, providing uh, programs in support of American Legion. I am, in fact, the founding commander of the American Legion Post 881 Moffett Field, active with the United Veterans Council, the Moffett Military and Family Collaborative, Veterans Voices of Santa Clara County, CalVet Leadership Conferences, specifically women veterans, uh, partnerships with San Jose Vet Center, Women in Military Appreciation Events, uh, and the Santa Clara County Military and Veterans Commission. So, I'd like to go ahead and introduce tonight's guest, the founder of NoaVet. I want to first say thank you for being here, Neil. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. You and I have just known each other very briefly, so it's exciting for me to have to have you on the show. Tell us first, before we talk about your great organization, just a little bit about yourself. I mean, after all, this is Veterans Helping Veterans TV. Uh, I am a uh, combat veteran, uh, which is what made me understand the needs of combat veterans, veterans in general. Uh, which is why we're doing what we're doing. Um, that was 50 years ago. Mm. So we have a lot of uh, post 9-11 people on staff helping us to uh, be relevant to today's veterans. A little bit about you and your history. You served yourself. I did. Um, I was a DI. Uh, I trained uh, about eight different cycles of uh, combat troops. And even though I had a compassionate reassignment, uh, when I got the third time my orders to go to Vietnam, mm. I didn't uh, say no because I felt responsible for the men I had sent over. Um, so I went too. And when people ask, where did you grow up? I tell them I grew up when they opened the plane door in NAM. That reality uh, is quite different from the training that I, I was expert in. Uh, so, How long did you serve? About, about three years, a little less than three years, I think. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you're pretty much a kid in your early 20s sending kids off to Vietnam. And still today, uh, the, these are primarily uh, people who are young. They're probably just out of college. They've been living in somebody else's home, usually their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, rarely had a career, and that's part of why they made the military their career. So, yeah, these are young people, and uh, they're going into a very... Uh, strict uh, environment where you are completely taken care of as long as you do your part. And uh, therefore, as we'll discuss, the transition is very difficult. Was it difficult for you? Um, I don't think I was fully aware. I think I was fairly numb. Um, 
But when I got back, uh, which was January 9th, on February 14th, we got engaged, and on March 23rd, we got married. So I just moved right in. I, I had a job uh, almost immediately um, because I had a connection through my mother. Uh, I went back to college. So for me, it was about the easiest transition anybody has because I, I went into a real life and had a lot of family because her, her family was very large. So uh, I was lucky. You were lucky. Not, not everyone has such an easy transition. Very few. Mm -hmm. On average, currently, it's uh, over two years before somebody comes to what I call stability which means that they can support themselves and, and have their own uh, place to live. Does not mean they're healthy, right. but during the day they can function in public. And there's a lot more, that, and that's why we do what we do, to get them to their best life. So perhaps they'll be able to sleep through the night. Perhaps they will be able to keep a job more than six months at a time. Perhaps they'll be more uh, involved with their family, a uh, little less drinking, a little less drugs, um, and be able to actually function fully in society. Uh, and while you can never forget, you can't unring that bell, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to have fun. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're about. So you just talked a little bit about your military experience, and of course, that's the driver for your organization. So let's go ahead and start there. How did you start NOAVET? Let's start with, first, let's, let's take a look at an image, um, oh. your logo for NOAVET. How did that come about? Um, let's, let's take a look at the representations yeah. in that logo. Yeah. Um, I did not want to uh, be like a, I feel most places are with you know the red, white, and blue and uh, everybody wrapping themselves in the flag. Okay. What I wanted to do was to create a concept so that another vet would know immediately, I understand, you may be looking forward in your life, okay. but you can never get rid of all that stuff in the back of your mind of what you went through and uh, what your friends went through. Mm -hmm. So that's what that uh, is all about. And I, I tried to get in multiple uh, uh, backgrounds. Uh, it, it covered most people's physical experience. Uh, it, we had a, a great artist uh, working with us, uh, you know, about six or seven tries to get this thing. But yeah, that's what it means. You, you never, never get rid of your history. Okay. So let's talk about NOAVET, how you came up with the name. Well, originally we are, and still legally, we are Friends of the Vet Center mm -hmm. because uh, the way we got started, my, both my uh, daughter and son-in-law got independently recruited by Stanford, um, and they threatened to bring the grandkids out here. So I came. Um, and having developed my first uh, charity uh, with my wife back in 1973, it's called People to People back in Rockland County, New York, um, based on a simple concept, no kid should go to bed hungry. I haven't found too many people who want to argue with that concept. Mm -hmm. um, so getting out here, I wasn't sure what to do. I'm retired, but um, that doesn't mean you stop. So when I got introduced to the San Jose Vet mm -hmm. Center, uh, Winita asked me to be on their advisory council, and eventually um, I moved into the primary position there. But the kinds of things that she wanted to do um, couldn't be done within the VA uh, permission structures. So, I mean, the VA can't even take a credit card uh, for a donation. So we wound up creating our own 501c3, uh, IRS approved charity. Okay. And um, the, the whole thing was based on actually, 
in terms of marketing? How can we get the, the concept out quickly and inexpensively? So I developed this card, okay. which really is, do you know a vet? Because only 5% of the country is, or less than 5%, are active or veterans. Um, so it's really, please give them this card. And the inside is what's really important. Okay. So let's, let's, let me just do a summary of NOAVET. So you, you are a nonprofit organization. You're, you're IRS approved. Mm -hmm. And the, your manner of counseling, you want your, your veterans, when they check in with you, to know that you provide, first of all, free services. Mm -hmm. uh, they can feel safe. Uh, there's non-judgmental uh, mentorship or counseling or to talk to We don't to a even friend. ask for their name to get on the website. Okay. Everything is anonymous. They can search all they want, uh, and nobody will know. It's uh, I I don't want to collect information because I want people to feel free and comfortable. Okay, and. So when they go to the website, they, they know that they'll get a multitude of resources from the VA, from the federal government, from the state and local government. My partner, my co-founder, uh, is an ex-Cisco engineer. Mm -hmm. um, he's not a vet, but he doesn't sleep much, so he just gets involved. And he developed the only, the first database of every federal, state, and local resource for veterans by zip code. We get calls and questions all over the country, and I can immediately direct them to the people who are going to be able to help them with a specific issue, whether it be governmental help or civilian help, uh, you know, instantly. And it's really valuable. And one of the things I know about your organization is, uh, and for example, you pulled out the card. There are issues that uh, the veteran themselves can actually take a look at on this card or on your website. Yeah. Uh, and you have about how many issues are primary? Right now there's about 90 different issues. Oh, okay. Um, and, and if they click on an issue, what they're going to get is uh, about two-thirds of the time they're going to get a copy of the uh, VA's MakeTheConnection.net uh, website, which is magnificent, mm -hmm. 700 and something videos. Okay. Uh, so if you don't know uh, what PTSD is or whatever, it starts off with, what is it? What does it feel like? It's not a clinical definition. It's, do you know somebody who actually feels like this or, or stress or uh, sleeplessness or addiction or whatever? Um, and they've got videos, we've got videos of people getting help, getting better. Um, and it, it moves down to, let's say uh, you were having a panic attack. There's a spot on that page, what do I do if I'm having a panic attack to stop it right now? These are really valuable things. The next step down is, okay, where do I get help? Right. And on the VA side, it talks about VA help. And on our side, if they click on the issues that are important mm -hmm. to them and they put in their zip code, that's where they get a custom result exactly for them and where they live. I think we might have some slides on that. Uh, showing some of the common referrals that uh, NOAVET makes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to some of the service agencies. Um, we do have the camera on us right now. I just wanted to take a moment to, to put this up. Uh, this is one of your common mm -hmm. uh, business cards. It's, it's pretty interesting. It, uh, it's a business card folded in half when, when a, a service member or a veteran opens it. Uh, it'll list actually some of the common common issues yep. that they run into, and uh, it's really handy. And, that's and then why you've got the trifold there, right? Right. Okay. But what we really use mostly uh, is the bottle, uh, the bag that you've got there oh, on the floor. Bag here, let me see. And uh, we work with schools and scouts to provide these thank you for your service cards uh, that I've got here. 
um, one of our school districts gave us 6,000 completed cards uh, this year. And inside, in this case, the message is, thank you for saving our world. Thank you for saving us. We love you, love the, the girl's name. Uh, but the important part to us is that these are given out uh, Veterans Day and the parades, uh, at the baseball game we just did for uh, about 400 veterans at the July 4th program for another 450 veterans. The trick is that on the back is the same message. We want to keep getting the message across because people don't make changes until they're ready to make a change. I, I have and, to agree. Yeah, and when they are ready, we want them to remember that they can not just get help with their addiction, but because if they were just concerned about that, you could go on Google and type in addiction in your zip code and you're fine. What NOAVET is about is about the whole you. Mm -hmm. It's about a self-analysis of a real intake. The first time I did this with, when we only had 60 issues on were with a student at Mission College he ticked off 22 items. We're talking about trying to get people back to a whole life, to not that you can ever forget what, what was back there, but to try to compensate and live in the real world um, and, and function well and have a family. And all of these issues need to be pretty well cleaned up. So what, what you're talking about is you're talking about a student veteran. So. Uh, one of the things that, uh, one of the ways that you and I met is uh, certainly through my uh, uh, activities and my um, uh, involvement in the veteran community. And mm -hmm. uh, while you inquired about how you could really come in contact with uh, still serving veterans, right. uh, one of my contacts, we, have, we share a mutual friend that uh, referred uh, you to me. and. Uh, one of the things that you and I talked about uh, is my job where I introduce reintegration and transition uh, of still serving veterans and the transition to civilian life. So what you just talked about is uh, one of the programs you have under NOVET, which is reaching out to student veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one, uh, to the schools and uh, the children providing their special sentimental thanks to her. Serving and veterans. of course, the, the parents get a letter as to why the children are doing this. We're developing a, uh, a video program that they can play in the schools, uh, in the classes, so that they understand what a veteran's about. It's not just combat. In fact, most of it isn't, uh, especially with your National Guard people. They're the ones out there at the fires and the earthquakes and all the rest of it, helping people and uh, providing the medical care and, and food and water and all the rest of it. So uh, we're trying to get uh, young kids to understand that the uh, military is just as wonderful as the fire people and the police and the ambulances. And you know, right. When you have a problem, mm -hmm. we're going to jump in and help. So let's uh, just do a summary of all the types of services that NOAVET does. Uh, we, okay. You talked about the, uh, the, the service in the elementary schools for the children. Uh, you talked about your outreach to student veteran organizations in the colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the number one thing, the most important thing is outreach. Yes. So we have uh, these cards distributed to libraries and uh, bars and barber shops and mm -hmm. um, as well as the, the schools and uh, we, we talk in front of rotaries and, uh, and companies like Oracle and BAE uh, trying to reach not just their veterans but also the general population. I mentioned only 5% uh, maximum are veterans or uh, military. That means that 95% of the country is not our audience but they may know, you'll excuse the expression, Crazy Uncle Joe, who really needs some help, who may not be getting out socially, who uh, may have all kinds of anger issues. And 
That's why it says, do you know a vet? Now, you did say you wanted to reach out to 9-11 veterans, so thankfully yeah. you, through your networking, you met me, and uh, I was honored to have you part of our Yellow Ribbon event right. uh, recently in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. So what that meant is you actually got in front, fingertip reach, with still serving veterans, uh, some coming back from deployment and others preparing to go. How was that experience for you? That was outstanding. I actually learned a lot about what the current military uh, has available as opposed to what we <laughs> didn't. Uh, this military one source, for instance, is fabulous. The, the kinds of services that are available to uh, serving people right now are just incredible. It's, it's a full range. The, uh, the, the uh, chaplain and the chaplain's services was amazing. Uh, the fact that the VA here at Palo Alto has a team of, I think, about eight people that are right there to help veterans transition, uh, it, it was eye-opening. But in addition to that, about 80% of the people who came to that signed up for one of our programs. and. The most valuable thing to me and to them is that we get their email address of their personal email, not their, their military right. email, so that they can continue to get information long into their civilian life. So one of the things that our still serving veterans are already used to is, is uh, for example, we just threw up a slide about military one source. Mm -hmm. So they're already used to uh, being self-sufficient and finding, going to military one source uh, to address uh, various needs in their, in their life or in their military career. Now what you offer is uh, something similar. So. When we talk about transition, they are aware of military one source, but they can be comforted by a similar, more expansive kind of military one source. The problem that, that, that we face is that in the military, the, the number one word we get of what did you miss when you transitioned is camaraderie. Right. The number two word is overwhelming in civilian life. Uh, because all of the structure is gone, all of your friends, and, and there is no civilian equivalent to the comradeship that you've got in the military. You're literally, you know, your life depends upon the other person's life, and you build bonds that just don't exist elsewhere. So when they leave, the second that they are out of the military, all of a sudden, you've got to find your own food, your own clothing, your own housing. Um, and for most of these people, it's the first time they're actually on their own without uh, living in mom's basement or something. There's so. Yes, and, and I agree. And uh, there's so much more to the transition process. And I do want to move us along to have you talk about some of the six recent successes ah. that uh, NOVET has had. Yeah, the, the technical of what we do mm -hmm. uh, is, is just that. In the last month, uh, I got a call from a guy who was very tentative on the phone, and I got a sense, so I asked him the uh, obligatory, do you feel like hurting yourself or anyone else? Mm. And he said, I'm not too sure I really want to live. Um, we talked about it. We, I, I told him I'd call him back within half an hour, and within half an hour I was able to get the kind of help and the answers that he needed to go forward. Um, I followed up with him, per his permission, about two and a half weeks later. Okay. First thing is, he answered the phone. That's good. That's good news. Um, and even though he didn't take our advice and our help, he was comforted. But uh, last week, I got a call from a woman who was a, uh, a wife of a deceased combat Marine veteran who was about to lose her house. No, that's not acceptable. This week, um, 
met with a person who's also on the UVC, um, who has two disabled veterans who can only work from home. Mm -hmm. We found them work that they can do that's important work, not just make work. Okay. So these are good successes. Those are great successes. Listen, I, I'd like to ask uh, as, as a final, to, to close the show, you've done some recent events and uh, if you can just give us a list of those and what may be coming up in the near future. Okay, uh, the most recent was the July 4th, followed two weeks later by the baseball game. Um, the, the next major thing is uh, the work we're doing uh, with another school district developing that uh, video and the, the card program and so on. Uh, in November, we've got, aside from Memorial Day and uh, Honor on the Row. Veterans Day. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, we also have a program coming up called uh, the Convoy of Hope, which is not just for military. Uh, it's for all people who are uh, suffering. And they'll have tents all over the place for specific things like shoes for kids and haircuts and breast cancer and all that, we have the tent for veterans. That's so we'll awesome. have at least 80 different service providers for veterans right there. I want to congratulate you on just how far along you've come in the evolution of the NOAVET CAV. And uh, I am sure the community and the local military here in Silicon Valley, we will be looking forward to how much more you'll be expanding your organization, because I understand you'll be expanding in mm -hmm. multiple states, and we mm -hmm. look forward to seeing that. Thank you very much. And we thank you for being here on our show today. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you.